In today's video, I'm gonna show you my three-part process for tweaking any preset sound so you can start from a great bass and create something that sounds your own. Brett Pontecorvo here at LiveKeyboardist.com where I help keyboard players just like you with the ins and outs of sound design, with building a stable live performance rig, and with live performance software. If you're new here, please consider hitting that like and subscribe button. All right, so my three-step process for tweaking synth presets goes like this. We start with the three P's, which are pitch, portamento, and polyphony. This is gonna control sort of the sound that your synthesizer makes based off the keys and how it kind of reacts with the actual hardware that you play. Then we move over to the shape of the sound, that's part two, uh, which if you're familiar with synthesis is the ADSR. Uh, so we'll control how long it takes to hear the sound, the volume sustain level, and of course its release. And then the last part of this is controlling texture. And that has a lot to do with what uh, types of wavetables or wave shapes you're using. So uh, for the purpose of this video, we're gonna transform this uh, really sort of ambient pad into a plucky lead, because uh, I think there's no better way to show this process on its feet than to just do it. So here goes. Uh, so here's the preset that it came with to begin. So pretty ambient. There's a little bit of detuning happening, um, but I want to make this into something that I can play as a lead. So we're going to start with the three P's, pitch, polyphony, and portamento. So I actually think that for the purposes of a lead sound, we don't want it uh, so transposed down in, in this sort of sense here. So pitch and serum lives here and here. Um, and there's also a master tune in the matrix. Um, you'll also see some key tracking, which in this case, we've got uh, noise here. Uh, and there's also key tracking on the filter. And that basically controls uh, how accurate your keyboard is. Like if I hit a C, does my synthesizer also play a C? Um, so for this, we're gonna actually move these octaves to zero because we want them to just reflect um, what it is that I'm playing. So we've already got a, a pretty different sound and now you can kind of hear it even a little bit more extreme, that detuning. So you'll see up here, we can kind of tell there's some fine tuning being modulated by a certain parameter. So. I think for now it can stay, but as we progress throughout this, we may have to come back. So that's it for pitch. Uh, now moving on to polyphony. Uh, if we check out the bottom here, this is where our controls exist for how many notes we can play at a time. So since this is gonna be a lead, I'm just gonna check that mono button because I'm not gonna want to play more than one note at a time with this synth. Um, and perhaps I want a little bit of glide uh, between my sounds. And I'm gonna do that by checking always and adjusting this portamento time. Now, depending on what you're tweaking, you may have to go the other way. Maybe you don't want the portamento. Um, but in this case, we'll put about 110 milliseconds of portamento. Now, we've dealt with pitch, we've dealt with polyphony, um, we've dealt with portamento. We're gonna move into the shape of the sound. So in a pad, we want this really long swell in, but not so much with this lead. So I'm gonna pull back the attack time on envelope one. Now on most synthesizers, envelope one controls your amplitude envelope, which controls how long it takes for the volume to reach its full expression. Way different, right? We hear that almost right away. Now, for a lead sound, we're not quite getting enough attack. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a little bit use of this filter to give us some more punch. Now, you may need to take punch off. You'll have to look, but I'm gonna take this cut off and pull it back and I'm gonna add a bit of resonance. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use an envelope. We'll try envelope two and see how it goes to open this filter when I hit a key. So we'll just drag this over to the cutoff Let's see what that sounds like. Yeah, 
big difference, right? Now, because I don't love the decay on this one, I'm actually going to create another envelope for it. So um, I'm just going to remove the modulator from that, go into three, and we'll do the same thing. Okay, so we're getting somewhere here. We've got a nice attack. We don't want much of a decay, but I am going to pull back just a tiny bit on the sustain here because doing it this way is going to allow us uh, a little bit more space for the punch to come through if that volume drops out. So we don't, we don't want to hold, pull our decay time back, and our sustain is a little lower. Okay, so we've got a bit of a punch now. And the last thing that we really need to do in terms of the ADSR portion of our tweaking synth presets is control how long it takes for the sound to go away. Um, now, again, this is done oftentimes with envelope one, but we do need to take a look at the effects section to make sure we don't have any long reverb tails. So for the release here, I'm gonna pull this back. Because it sounds to me like there's quite a bit of a long release. So, uh, we've got a long reverb here. Now, if I pull back the size, I bet we're going to get a little bit more clarity. Alright, we're getting somewhere. Moving closer and closer uh, to a lick. Now, the last thing that we deal with in this context is texture. Now, we've got these uh, wavetables, and they make a particular sound. But we also have this noise oscillator, and this is doing just what you would think it, it's doing. It's making some noise. I'm going to turn that off because I don't know that it's really helping our sound right now. Okay. Uh, I can dig that. Um, maybe let's put it back in with a little bit less volume and a bit of key tracking. Okay, so it's really sticking out now. And I think lastly, we kind of need a bit of a foundation here. So I'm gonna try transposing just one of these down. Try this one. I actually think it was better this way. And now that we've made a bit of space, I'm hearing some of that detuning and it's not really working as well as I'd like it to. So these fine tuners are being controlled by something and we gotta find what they are. So if we go over to our matrix, A fine and B fine, these are being controlled by LFO1. So, we can do a couple things here. We can alter the amount of um, LFO that's being applied, or we could change the rate. But I think for now, I'm gonna actually just change the amount by kind of clicking down here. So we get a little bit less detuning, but still some. Okay. Uh, that's working for me, and I want just a touch more punch, so I'm going to throw in uh, some compression here. Um, and that's going to give us just uh, something, you know, to work with here. So we'll pull back the threshold. Till we see it start to kick. Pull our ratio maybe just 2 to 1. We don't want crazy compression. Okay, new compression. All 
All right, that's working for me. And let's throw a little bit of distortion on as well. Um, just again to sort of gain some texture here. Those are the steps to tweak any preset. 